There is no shortage of cleaning information on the internet. However, because the internet is the internet, there's also no shortage of cleaning misinformation floating around out there on the World Wide Web. Recently, we've received quite a few requests for a video on cleaning myths, and quite frankly, we think it's an awesome idea. So, because you asked, in this video, we've set out to debunk some popular and long-standing cleaning myths. Cleaning and disinfecting are basically the same thing. Now, while it may sound like you're doing the same thing, when you clean a surface, you're actually removing the dirt. And when you disinfect a surface, you're actually killing bacteria. Even if you clean with a disinfectant, so spray it on and wipe it off, you're not actually cleaning or disinfecting anything. And here's why. Let's say you want to clean your kitchen counters using an all-purpose cleaner. You would simply spray your cleaner on the countertop, wipe it away with a clean cloth, and congratulations, you've just cleaned your kitchen counter. However, if you wanted to disinfect your kitchen counters, you will need to use a disinfectant spray or an all-purpose spray that has a disinfectant in it. And then you have to let the product sit wet on your countertops for five to 10 minutes, depending on how long the product requires to effectively disinfect. Now that waiting period is called dwell time and it's needed for the disinfectant to effectively do its job and kill bacteria. Once it's had the time to do this, then you'll just wipe it away with a clean cloth and look at you go, you've just disinfected your kitchen counters. Remember, a disinfectant is designed to do just that, disinfect. A cleaner contains surfactants, which raise dirt to the surface and make it easily removable. A disinfectant doesn't have that. These two aren't the same, and unless a product specifically states that it contains both a cleaner and a disinfectant, it will not do both. And unless you leave the product on the surface to dwell for the prescribed amount of dwell time, it won't kill any bacteria. The more cleaning product, the better the clean. People tend to get excited when using cleaning product. And by getting excited, I mean squirting two or three times the amount of required product, or in cleaning terms, we like to refer to that as someone being trigger happy. But the truth is, more product does not necessarily mean that you're going to get a better clean. In fact, if you overuse a product, not only are you wasting money, but it won't completely rinse off your surface and will leave a sticky residue behind. This will feel sticky and tacky to the touch and will also attract dirt quicker, which will make your surface look dirtier faster, which means you have to clean it more often. So whether you're making your own cleaning product or using something store-bought, remember to follow the directions which strongly encourage you to use a certain amount of product to accomplish your task. Remember, the directions are there for a reason, so it pays to follow them. More product does not mean better. The more laundry detergent, the cleaner the clothes. And on that note, the same thing applies for laundry detergent. Before he met me, Chad was really guilty of this. He wouldn't use the measuring cap for detergent, of course not. He would just pour freehand until he felt there was a sufficient amount of detergent to tackle his socks and undercrackers and make them squeaky clean. And while he thought he was doing himself a favor by using four times the recommended dose of detergent, he was, in reality, just making it more difficult for the rinse cycle to get all the soap out of his clothes, not to mention the fact that he was dumping a whole bunch of money into the washing machine. This is especially true with high efficiency machines. Overusing detergent really causes problems for your machines and the cleanliness of your clothes. So with laundry, and especially for high efficiency machines, follow the instructions and use the line in the cap as a guide. You will find the right amount of detergent will actually yield cleaner clothing. Trust me. Using newspaper to clean windows. This one isn't so much a myth as it is a piece of advice from many years ago, which for the most part doesn't really work as well as it used to. My biggest problem with using a newspaper to clean my windows is that I get the newsprint all over my hands and occasionally on my windowsills. That said, the biggest reason I don't use newspaper to clean my windows is because using a good glass cleaning microfiber cloth does the trick nicely. And if I want a streak-free glisten to my windows, I'll just call on my trusty squeegee. 
I also wanted to mention that another reason I don't use newspapers on my window is because I don't really get the newspaper anymore. I just read the news online and I put a sign on my front door so normally we don't get any flyers either. In fact, this is the only newspaper we have in our house. We bought it at an antique shop and it is from 1902. So that brings me to our common question of the week. Do you still read the papery, hand-delivered version of the news or do you prefer leafing through the news on a device? Let me know in the comment box below. There's a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you like this video. And you can click this button right here if you want to subscribe to Clean My Space to catch more of our great cleaning videos. Also, be sure to check out our blog, which is cleanmyspace.com. We are working on a whole bunch of cool things over there, including a newsletter done by me just for you, as well as some exclusive video content only available on the blog. So be sure to check it out. As always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.